Hello, dear friends. My topic for today is the meaning of the al Khet, which is the confessional prayer, the vidui, on Yom Kippurim. On Yom Kippur, we have two confessional prayers. One of them is 22 different words paralleling the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, the Ashamnu Bagadnu, the vidui, confessional prayer. Uh, which we also say, by the way, Ashkenazim say it Monday and Thursday, and uh, Sephardim say it every day in the um, confessional prayer in the Tachanun and um, in the supplication. And uh, specifically, we also say it on these days between Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur and, and Yom Kippur. And then on Yom Kippur, we have a second confessional prayer called the al Khait, where we list different possible sins and it follows the alphabet again twice. So we have 22 times two, which is 44 different things that we list. What is the meaning of this? To understand the meaning of al you know, sometimes I find people would come over and say, what are all these lists of sins? Like, you think I did all this? <laughs> I don't want to lie before God that I did all these things. So of course, my answer first is that it's in the plural. We're talking as a community. We're not saying that necessarily you did all this. Maybe you didn't do any of it, but we have to, we have a certain share of responsibility. But another thing that I've noticed over the years, that the more righteous a person is, the more they think they did most of what's on the list. And the less righteous a person is, the more they have a tendency to think I didn't do any of that. So um, it's also something to take into account. Now, uh, let me start off by going backwards for a moment meaning backwards in time to Rosh Hashanah. On Rosh Hashanah night, Rabbi Shlomo Kalbach of blessed memory used to say, how come on the night of Rosh Hashanah, after the Marav service, it says in the Machzor, if you look in the special prayer book for Rosh Hashanah, it says, you're supposed to greet everyone and say to them, Lishana tova tikatevu. May you be inscribed for a good year. Some people say, may you be inscribed and sealed for a good year. Now, this is cute, but why does it say it in the prayer book? By way of comparison, on Shabbat, after the Friday night service, it doesn't say, and everybody goes around and says Shabbat Shalom to everybody. And on the Sukkot Machzor or Sidur, it doesn't say on the Friday, on the uh, first night of Sukkot service, and you go around and say Chag Sameach to everybody. So why on Rosh Hashanah, as does it say, you go around to everybody and say L'Shana Tova, Tikatev, you should be um, inscribed for a, good, for a good year. So Kabach says something very interesting. The Talmud already, and it's brought in Halakha and the Rambam, differentiates between two types of sins. Sins between man and God what people sometimes like calling ceremonial sin. But sins between man and God. Yom Kippur right away, if a person asks for forgiveness, God forgives. It's between you and God. You made your point. <laughs> Viewer says here, God forgives. <laughs> the essence of the day of Yom Kippur is there to, um, for forgiveness and for pardon. However, if you wrong somebody specific, Yom Kippur is not going to work. You have to go to that person. You have to talk to them. You have to say you're sorry and ask for forgiveness. Of course, obviously, if they're a tough person and you ask them a few times, they keep saying no, no, no. You can't deal with their stubbornness. But the point is that you have to make that attempt. You have to go out and seek their forgiveness. They have to know that you want to mend or else God can't forgive you because it wasn't God that you wronged. Indirectly, it was by not following his Torah. But first and foremost, that there's that individual. Because when you stole, you did break the commandment of not to steal, but you stole from somebody. Okay? And that person, you also wronged. And when you hurt somebody, and uh, you called them names, it's good that you have remorse, but you got to see what you can fix. And if so, somehow you can fix, you have to still ask them for their forgiveness. So Karl Buch says the reason why then, it says in these Masr, the prayer book for Rosh Hashanah, to go around the synagogue and ask people for forgiveness is because there's always somebody, even in our immediate 
um, uh, social circle who we might have hurt and not realized. So by going around the room and saying, wishing everybody a good year, you might accidentally come upon that one person or one of the persons who you wronged. And they're going to think to themselves, you know what? Maybe this guy is not such a bad guy. And then you'll have the ability to be forgiven. So in a sense, it's a reminder in Rosh Hashanah. It's a reminder that the sins between man and man, you got to go out and do something. So it's giving you a way, a means to do something. In the same way, I want to interpret the Al-Chait on Yom Kippur. If we look at the penitential prayer on Yom Kippur, start, even starting with the first one, Ashabnu Bagadnu. I'll just read you it in English, the Ashabnu Bagadnu. We have sinned, we have to act treacherously, rob, slander, perversely, wicked, etc., etc. They are all sins between man and man, not between man and God. Now let me continue. If you look at all the 44 al khaits confessional prayer, which is specific for Yom Kippur, we have sinned uh, under duress and out of free will. We have sinned of the hardness of heart, of unwillingness, the utterance of our lips, unchastity, um, deceitfully, in sin in speech, wronged in neighbor, thoughts of the heart, insincere confession, uh, by force, by desecrating, foolish speech, evil inclination, deceit and lies, bribery, scorn, evil speech, interest and extortion, business prying eyes, arrogance, insolence, casting off yoke, perverting judgment, and trapping a neighbor, lack of seriousness, obstinacy, running to do evil, gossip, veins, a vain oath, faceless hatred, breach of trust, confusion of heart, you know, it's they're basically between man and man. I'm not saying that some of them could not also include things between man and God, but basically they're between man and man. There's nothing on the list that says we didn't keep Shabbat. We didn't keep kosher. We didn't follow this law, that. So what is the point? The idea is like this, and I'll tell you what it means. It's not trying to... Uh, undermine the importance of keeping the, the mitzvah between man and God. But as I said, if a person wronged, did something wrong in the mitzvah between man and God, you come to synagogue, Yom Kippur, you say, God, I made a mistake and I really want to try again. And you're forgiven right away because God is forgiving. But if you did things to people, then God can't forgive. He wants to. He, she, it wants to, but you got to go out and try to improve your way first. Got to look at least for those people. At least if you can remember who they are, try to do something about it. So that's why we say the al and we say it so many times to tell you Yom Kippur is almost over. Seize the opportunity, carpe diem. Find the person, ask for forgiveness, and then God can forgive you today. That's the al It's a wake-up call. Tell us to use the opportunity. It's the last day. We had the first opportunity of Rosh Hashanah. The days have gone by. Now it's Yom Kippur. It's the al -Khid. And that al is a wake-up call to remind us what to do before the hour is too late. And when I think of it in general, life is like that too. We go through this life and we wrong people and we just hope that they forget about it. But part of life is trying to take those opportunities to set things right. We don't have to do crazy things, but we have to make an attempt to set things right in the way that we can. So this is the way the understand, I understand the confessional prayer. It's a wake up call to things between man and man because we have to set these straight. And in general, from the Torah's point of view, derech eretz kadmala Torah, which means the issues between man and man come first in the sense that God realizes also that if you didn't have a religious upbringing, you don't really understand, or you did, but you don't understand Shabbat Kashrut, that could be because they're not self-evident mitzvot. They're what we call mitzvot shimiyot. They're not self-evident. So if you really have remorse, say, God, you know, I really like to do it, but I had difficulty understanding why. God forgives. But things between man and man, it's harder for God to forgive because 
you have a rational mind and your mind understands that stealing is bad, that slander is terrible, that gossip is character assassination. You know that and you did it anyhow. So why do you expect God to forgive you? The Talmud says about the generation of the Mabul, of the deluge, of the flood of Noah, the main reason why they received divine retribution was because of the fact that they stole from each other. That they should have understood not to do. It wasn't yours. So God gets angry when the basic things we can't do. Of course, he's not happy when we're not filling, fulfilling his Torah, especially the Jewish people in general. But I'm saying the basic elements are the worst because that you should understand. With that, God gave you an intellect. Why can't you do that? What's your excuse for that? Because you didn't understand Kashrut? Because nobody taught you? But these things are something which is innate within the human being. You should understand that. But this is another aspect I want to point out. But, the moin, but what I want to point out is also the, the mitzvah between man and man are the things that we need to make that move to talk to people. And the second issue, which I said, that God expects at least for a person to rectify themselves on the lever between man and man. This is also the message of the Haftorah, of Yom Kippur, which we read on Yom Kippur Day. It's taken from Isaiah chapter 57. <clears throat> Let me just read it to you. <clears throat> I'll just, a uh, small part here. God says, is this a fast day I have chosen? A day when a man will oppress himself, when he bows down his head like a bulrush in the wind, and he lays his bed with sackcloth and ashes. You think that a fast day just means that you are not eating and that you're sitting in sackcloth and ashes and pounding your chest? That's a fast day? You call this a fast day? You call this a day for the Lord's favor? No, this is the fast day I choose. Loosen the, binding, loosen the bindings of the evil. Break the slavery chain. Those who are crushed, release them to freedom. Shatter the yoke of slavery. Break your bread with the starving people. And bring dispossessed wanderers home. When you see a person naked, clothe them. Do not avert your eyes from your own flesh. And then your light will break out like the sunrise. And healing will grow fast over your wound. Your righteousness will go before you. And the presence of God following behind to gather up what falls. Then you will call out and God will answer. You will cry out and you will say, I am here. You will cast the chains of slavery from the midst and the raised fists and Ruth's words. And if you give of your soul to the starving and answer the hunger of souls oppressed, then your light will shine out in the darkness and your night will be like noontime. That's Isaiah. That's the goal of the fast. The fast is a means to an end to, of transformation. And transformation of human being starts with <clears throat> the foundation of the building and the first floor, which is being a good person and not hurting others. The second level, and by the way, this is also part of the Torah. The Torah says, do not steal. The Torah says, do not lie. The Torah says, do not cheat. Look in uh, Leviticus chapter 19, it's all there. Once you get to that level, which Rabbi Cook calls natural morality, then you can transcend the higher level called sanctified morality. And then you can understand the mitzvah between man and God and how they create special sensitivities. But you'll never understand those sensitivities unless you have that first level. I wish everybody Shana Tova, a great new year. Shalom, shalom.